Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. In this video, we are looking at the NBA slate for Wednesday, November 2nd. We have a 10-game slate today. Looks a lot better than yesterday's four-gamer. Just came to an end. The NBA winning streak fell at six games straight on DraftKings and four on FanDuel. Weren't able to cash last night. So look to bounce back tonight. Get right back on the train. As always, if you enjoy the videos, appreciate sure the like button. Subscribe if you haven't already. Check out Twitter for updates. I post the final core there. You know, once we get all the injury news and lots of questionable pieces, as always, starting off the slate. But let's go ahead and get into the first look. Starting off at point guard today, top end. You know, Luca is over 12K. He's going up against the Jazz, who are looking great so far this year at six and two. The Mavs coming off of a terrible loss against the Thunder, where they gave up like a 16 to two run to close out the fourth. Luca's still been doing his thing, but. It's still a very high price tag, and you have a lot of other superstars on the slate, so probably won't be forcing my way to get to Luka today. You have John Moran against uh, Portland. You know He had a great shooting game last time out, just played 31 minutes, uh, so he lost a few minutes with the blowout. Also, Desmond Bain is questionable tonight, so if he's not able to play, then John Moran looks a little bit better, but I like some guys that are cheaper than those two. 9K range. We'll see if Garland is back, then it's going to be tough to get to Donovan Mitchell and... The Hawks have a not the easiest matchup going into New York against the Knicks in that slower-paced defensive team. You have De'Aaron Fox is out against Miami, so that's going to open up big value on Sacramento's side. So we'll touch on that once we get down there. But CJ McCollum against the Lakers, still viable option, but you know, with Zion back, and they're still missing Brandon Ingram, but Zion's going to take enough usage where I don't love the price tag on CJ. I'd rather get to, like, Cade Cunningham, who's taken all the usage recently. He's been... Balling out plays big minutes, um, triple double flirting with that sort of upside every game, and really been consistent since the last like week or so. So I'll go ahead and probably put him in at the guard spot. But you also have Simons at 76. He looks great just without Damian Lillard and all the production that he gets in terms of shooting, assisting, usage, more minutes. Van Fleet is questionable. I mean, he was a his news was huge last time out. Once he gets ruled out, you got to jump on Siakam, Ananobi, Barnes, those three in particular. You can even look to Gary Trent. High 6K range. Nothing really particularly unless uh, Van Fleet is out, then I'll jump on Scotty Barnes. Westbrook's coming off the bench now. I mean, he's he's not that much of a play unless you really like Westbrook. Uh, Trey Jones, tough shooting night last time out, 24 minutes or 24 fantasy points in 31 minutes, just 2 of 12 shooting. He's viable because Keldon Johnson is also questionable, and if he's out with Vassell already out, they're going to need guys to step up. But I probably like Josh Richardson and like some of the value, uh, some of the other guys a little bit more than Trey Jones. But first guy you got to put in at point guard is is going to be Davion Mitchell. He's only $4,200 point guard, shooting guard eligible. I uh, played 31 minutes last time against Charlotte and played really really well he's going to see over 30 minutes without fox today starting at point guard and he's a, a good player good defensive player can hit the three over at shooting guard we saw paul george go absolutely nuts against houston gets the same exact matchup again uh eight blocks and steals for him combined last time out with 35 points and the game winner uh, the only one by two but you know with the way clipper season's going right now they'll take it i like some the guys in the 7k range at shooting guard even like uh, we don't have Kate at this position, but Simon is the guy I'm going to be looking to get to on both sides once again. Uh, whenever Lillard is out and he's still at a reasonable price tag in a great matchup against Memphis, which should be a super high-scoring game. This could be one of the, the better fantasy games of the day. So put him in with this 50-point upside. Levine is out, so you're going to get some more value on the Bulls side like Caruso and possibly DeSumo, and you can look to DeRozan and Vooch. Kelly Oubre against the Bulls. Now, they're still missing their point guards, and Still missing Martin, so well, at least Rozier's doubtful unless he gets upgraded at some point throughout the day. Josh Richardson's 58. He's going to be a great option, especially if uh, Keldon Johnson gets ruled out, but you know, he's benefited with just playing starter-level minutes with some of the injuries on the Spurs right now with LaSalle being out, and that should continue. Other picks, uh, DeSumo at 54. I mean, he's fine right now. He might get better value as the day goes on, but he can give you like 30, 32, 33. Below $4,500. Uh, nothing really right now is piquing my interest too much. Unless we get some news throughout the day, which we probably will. Over at small forward, LeBron is probably probably probable every single game. That's how the Lakers like to do it for some reason. 83, 85 for DeRozan, 83 for Brown. 
like DeRozan a little bit more, better matchup there. You know, Markkanen's been, <laughs> he's been so good this year. It's been incredible to watch if you watch the Euro basketball over the summer. You know, he looked a lot better during that, and he's kind of carried over to the NBA. So that's great to see. You'll probably get him at uh, to become the most improved player in the NBA at like plus 600 or plus 600, plus 900 odds right now across the sports book. So that's something I like a lot. But Gordon Hayward's benefited with just more minutes and more shots. Same thing with Oubre. Both guys are, are decently priced to me, not like must plays. Another guy on the Kings that I like, just going to get some more value and more production is Kevin Herter. You can also consider going with like Harrison Barnes at 49, but Herter's played well for them last few games, shooting the three really well. And if he's shooting the three well with some of the peripherals that he will give you and the minutes that he will play, especially without Fox, even though it's not the easiest matchup against Miami, I'll still take it at this price tag. Shooting guard and small forward eligible. It's a pretty nice price tag. Uh, power forward options. Top end is Giannis, but still a very high price tag at 12-6 against the Pistons. I like some some of the other cheaper guys, honestly, unless we just get a bunch of value throughout the day. Like Markkinen and Randall are both really nicely priced. Don't mind Markkinen at 76 the way that he's been going this year. Josh Hart is questionable dealing with a concussion. If he's out, then open up more production for Jeremy Grant at 63. P.J. Washington is finally starting to step up and play better recently with back-to-back games of over 40 and uh, taking 20-plus shots in both of those games. So at this price tag against uh, the Bulls, definitely can get behind the him. Moving over to center. Once again, you, know, you can play Giannis here, but I probably won't do that. I still like Sabonis. Without Fox, going to get more usage. He's typically always been in foul trouble, which is frustrating. Back-to-back games, fouling out, like... I mean, he's been in the league long enough to know how to not get into foul trouble like that. But it still happens. Nurkic, 75. Not the easiest matchup against Steven Adams, but he will get more usage without Lillard. The whole team will. And he can put up big-time games. Now, a guy that I liked a lot this year is like Zubat. has been playing him a decent amount of times. It's typically worked out uh, without Leonard. There's more minutes to go around. There's possibly going to be without Covington, who they sometimes like to play at center at small ball lineups. And... Zubats gets a great matchup against uh, the Houston young team. Lots of opportunities for blocks and steals. Last time he faced them, he put up 41 with four blocks and an easy double-double in 31 minutes. So love the fact that he's seeing a lot more minutes this year, averaging almost 20, over 29. And in closer games that he's playing well, he sees over 30, 33, 34, 35. And he's a, such a great per-minute producer, especially this year with that Hartenstein. You don't really have anybody... As long as Zubats is playing well to really take his minutes away. Uh, unless they're, they're like full strength and they like to go small. But Houston with Sangoon, it's a, not the terrible matchup for Zubats to match up there. And then over at the guard position right now, putting in Cade Cunningham. But you know, things might change once we get the Van Fleet news. You can get to those value guards with Ananobi at the forward spot. But Scotty Barnes, you can look to get to Siakam at forward as well. Right now, these are the five that I like. Sacramento, take advantage of a couple of their value picks just without Fox. It's a a big hit for them. Simons, just with Portland being shorthanded still. Zubats with Clippers missing a few guys. And then Cade, the way that he's been balling out and gives you 50-point upside at a reasonable price tag at 81. So that's it for DraftKings. Let's go over to FanDuel. So on FanDuel, have the picks on the screen already, but leaves you still with a bunch of salary left over 74 your top end guys, you have Luca cheaper than he is on DraftKings, so easier to get him on FanDuel if you wanted to. 8K range, still like Cade a bit at 84. You have McCollum is cheaper at 8K. Where does DraftKings number? 6K. You know, Smith is almost 7K. He's not my favorite. I'd rather get to like Jalen Green or Trey Jones. Both guys are you know, pretty great options for the minutes that they play. DeSumo's in play, but typically I like him when he's in the 4K range. Reggie Jackson, 47. Uh, definitely somebody you can look to. But right now, I have Davion Mitchell at 49. And he's a, a great value on both sides. Tough to pass, at least on DraftKings. FanDuel 49 is a little bit easier to, just to get away from, but I still think he's going to have a great game. Shooting guards, Simons at 78. It's a great price set for a guy with 50-point upside. Still like Paul George. I mean, last time he was super cheap, it was like a must-play at like $8,200, $8,300. You never get Paul George that cheap. And you know, now he's 9 k so you, if people jump on him, you can maybe look elsewhere. Price tag has kind of come up to where you'd expect it to be in the matchup. Uh, other picks would be going down a, a little bit further, uh, like Tyler Hero, 
left the game with an eye issue. If he's not able to play today, which would not be surprised, it's a great matchup against the Kings. You'll probably get uh, more value and production from Duncan Robinson, who had a great game last night. From and Max Drew started in place of Hero in the second half, and then even like Gabe Vincent will look pretty good. Herder 6K on Fando, so he's not a must like he, or he's not a great value like he is on DraftKings, but still you can consider him. You also have Jalen Green there, uh, Lonnie or not Lonnie Walker. He's 55. I was thinking of Josh Richardson there. But speaking on Josh Richardson, I put him in at small forward, 53 for a guy that's going to play over 30 minutes and could see more than that easily if they're still without, I mean, if they become without Keldon Johnson today. Strews at 48 if there's no hero. Looks really good. You know, he can hit the three well. He can get you some rebounds. And like Kennard and Vincent and Powell as punt plays. Decent. Small forward Josh Richardson is here. You have good price tag on Giannis at 11-6 if you want to get to him. A lot of some of these teams on back to backs, not a lot of them, but the Heat um, are one of those teams. So, like I mentioned, Hero probably don't expect him to play, but we'll see once we get the official news. Bulls also on a back to back. They already ruled out Levine with his uh, injury maintenance. But Scotty Barnes, if there's no Van Fleet, Gordon Hayward, Kelly Oubre, OG, depending on Van Fleet news once again. Those guys look really good. But right now, I like the $5,300 price tag for Josh Richardson. You can also consider Harrison Barnes without uh, Jaron Fox. He should get some more shot opportunities. Uh, power forward. Another value that I like on the Kings side, or at least on FanDuel, is Keegan Murray for the minutes that he'll play. And can hit the, can shoot really well. He can get you some peripheral stats, maybe some more without Fox, who's been a great rebounder and source of assists this year. Marking in 78, his price tag is rising pretty quickly, but it... Makes sense. He's in play still. I like Randall's price at 74. Uh, other picks, 6K would be like Grant if there is no Josh Hart. PJ Washington, the way that he's been playing the last few games. And then below in the 5K range, it's like Keegan Murray, Jabari Smith. 4K, it's like Harrison Barnes. And then last but not least at center, you have a couple guys above 9K. Like Siakam would be a great option if there is no. Van Fleet, he's still playable without Van Fleet, but he just looks a lot better without Van Fleet. Sabonis, so 81, can get behind him without Fox. Uh, but I'm going Zubats on both sides. At least on Fando, you also get those, you get an extra point for blocks, and you can rack up those. Also don't mind Nurkic at 71. And you can consider putting in like P.J. Washington if you wanted to. Uh, but this is what I got. It's a 10-game slate, so I'm sure we'll get a lot of news throughout the day. So be prepared to make changes and pivots. You can follow me on Twitter for updates. Best of luck today, and I will see you all next time.